On today's show, we have Justin Gambino with us. My friend, Justin, thanks so much for taking the time to be with us. Hey, man. Thanks for having me. You got a big smile on your face outdoors at the Thai restaurant, full belly, full of good food. Bro. Good time for for our interview, my friend. Yeah. Lips are burning right now from the spice. (laughs) It's like, man, life is good, bro. You're wearing a Bucky's hat? Yeah, man. Of course. Yeah. We're uh, Life is good, bro. I, I was gonna say I got four kids. I have more Bucky's clothes than I do like you know, like real adult clothes. I think. Yeah, man. Every time I go, my kids are like, "Dad, you gotta get the shirt." I'm like, All right, "That's cool." Justin, so. before we get into the interview, speaking of Bucky's, what do you normally get when you go there? Is it like a little bit of everything, or do you always go <laughs> get the same stuff? Um, for me, bro, uh, Bucky's. Now you know, seeing it everywhere in Texas. What I get at Bucky's, bro, is a restroom break. <laughs> they had the cleanest bathrooms in America. <laughs> bro, and fuel. That's the two things. I'm sorry. Like, I, I have had my fair share of Bucky's treats and merch and stickers. And I'm like, you know, all I need is yeah. a clean restroom and some fuel right now. And you always will know, you'll know you'll have a a um a toilet to use because there's about 150 in each bathroom so <laughs> that is very true i always like i don't i don't wait for the restroom this is real life stuff i don't wait for the restroom that someone just came out of i wait for the restroom that the bucky's employee just that's came right. out of because you know that thing is clean <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> That's right. Travel tips with Justin Gambino. That's Come what we're on, doing bro. today. Come on, bro. <laughs> we know where the Thai restaurant in Florence is. We got we got the Bucky's hacks. Man, this is awesome. Hey, <laughs> after that spice from after the spice from the Thai food, you're gonna need a Bucky soon. That's true. You might need a Bucky's. <laughs> <laughs> you might be pulled over for Bucky's. Uh, don't oh, don't speak that over me right now, bro. <laughs> don't speak that over me. I got a couple. I got a couple more hours tonight, so. Oh, no. <laughs> I think we'll be right. I know that there's no Buckies in. Uh, well, I don't know if there's any Buckies in Kentucky. I know that Tennessee there is now one. Like there is there's one a in couple Kentucky in Kentucky. Now. Yeah, Richmond, Kentucky, and um, somewhere else. I can't remember. I guess I need to get out more. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're you're probably not driving through Richmond very often. Not many people are. No. No. Not this. Yeah. Not this year. Yeah. Uh, well, Justin, the first time I was actually introduced uh, to you was not through your music. It was actually through a video of your testimony that I saw. Mm. Um, and it was very powerful. And so I think it would be a good way for you to kind of introduce uh, yourself to our listeners, if you would mind uh, sharing a little bit about your testimony with us. Yeah, um, man. Where do I start? How far back do you want me to go? Justin? Well, listen, you know. <laughs> When I was two, no. (laughs) (laughs) All right, I'll fast forward a little bit. You know, so like, uh, I don't remember this, but my mom would say that like at five years old, I would bring my Bible to church and I'd strum on it like a guitar. And at the age of nine, they thought it was like a really great idea. Oh, he's strumming on his Bible like a guitar. Maybe we should put him in piano lessons. That (laughs) That doesn't make sense. I hated it. I absolutely hated it. And then... My best friend got his first guitar, and I couldn't put his guitar down. And so my 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 uh, my parents decided to get me a guitar at the age of 15. That's when I picked up the guitar, but that's also the same age that I got my first job. And I was raised in church my whole life. I was, you know, raised around um, <clears throat> the other kids in church where we were doing, you know, youth lock-ins, youth camp, and um you know, it's just like there was no sleeping in in the Gambino household, you know, that we, we were going to church and we were homeschooled. And so, like, I once I got my first job, I was introduced to a completely different crowd. Um, kids that were uh, <clears throat> there were some kids that I worked with that um, that were public school and, you know, they they acted a little different. I'm mean, nothing against public schoolers, but like th- this group of kids I started hanging out with, I started getting a taste of the world. I started getting invited to like parties and and I started drinking at an early age and I started going downhill really fast. And by the time I was 18 years old, about two or three years into hanging out with this crowd, it just had a bad influence on me, gave me a little taste of the world. And this homeschool kid was just like, just wanted to fit in, you know? And, uh, 
it was like two months after I graduated high school. I'm eight. I just turned 18. And like now I'm, I'm getting in so much trouble where I'm like addicted to alcohol. I'm partying on the weekends, going to church on Sundays, two different lives. And now we decide to break into a place and steal a bunch of money. And it's like gone that far downhill. And before I knew it, man, it was like two months after I graduated high school and I found myself before a judge getting judged for what I had done wrong. And that was like a wake up call for me because here I am, a kid that's like always kept my nose clean, you know, always went to church and then get a little bit of taste of the world. And I'm like, now I kind of like this. And I started allowing those people around me to influence me in a negative way so much to where I find myself in a courtroom. And, uh, and then I had a choice that day in the courtroom that the judge started asking some, some questions that, you know, usually you wouldn't hear a judge ask. He started asking questions like, how many siblings do you have? Are your, are both your parents in the picture? Uh, started asking questions like that. And, uh, you know, looking back now, I realized just how, you know, how just that judge was to like yeah. kind of dig a little bit deeper, find out what, who Justin really was, how he was raised. And um, so I answered those questions. I said, judge, I'm one of six kids. My, both my parents are, they're in the picture. My dad is the only one that works. My mom homeschools all of us. And he just had a lot of, a lot of mercy on me that day. And he said, I'm going to give you a, I'm going to, I'm going to give you a choice. Um, So you got a decision to make today. You can either take this felony on your record and go to jail today. Or if you want to straighten up your life and join the military, I'll allow you to do that. And then I'll make, I'll, I'll make this felony into a misdemeanor and uh, you'll have to do a lot of community service. You'll still have to go down to the jail, get your mugshot taken. Everyone and their mom's going to be able to Google it after this. You know, he didn't say all that, but you know, it's yeah. the things that are going through my mind, you know, mm-hmm. 18 years old. And so I said, well, I'll sign up for the Navy. And, um, you know, I, I, I could have, I could have taken that route to go to jail. I think it was like a minimum of six months, have a felony on my record. But um, instead, I joined the Navy. I signed up for eight years, and uh, which is uh, that's a that's a that's a pretty big, you know, contract. And uh, before I knew it, two years later, two thousand seven, I was uh, I was over in Iraq um, during Operation Iraqi Freedom, just working and fighting for the same freedom that I took for granted. Mm, yeah. And uh, but that, you know, looking back, that is whenever I realized just how much God was pursuing me because at that, you know, I picked up the guitar at the age of 15 was my best friend. Now here I am turning 21 in Iraq. Whenever I used to enjoy drinking all the time, now I can't, I can't take a sip, you know? And I'm just like, yeah. man, I turned 21 in Iraq. This, this isn't fun. And, uh, yeah. and I was far from the Lord then, you know? And then I remember, um, just having this desire in my heart to go to the chapel that we had on base and um it was on a wednesday night and the chaplain asked the whole congregation of 10 of us <laughs> there's just 10 of us in this chapel man and he said he said does anybody here have experience playing guitar and leading worship that kind of thing and i'm thinking i'm the only i'm the only one in this room that's like raising my hand right now like what are the odds you know yeah and, um, you know, just, I just look back and just see how much God was like pursuing my heart and putting that guitar back in my hand. And, um, so fast forward to coming back home. Now I'm, now I'm dealing with a lot of like anger issues, depression, PTSD, mm. and I'm like trying to live right, but I'm still struggling with all the, the same addictions that I had before, i.e. alcohol, uh, uh, pornography, like all this stuff that I brought overseas with me and then I brought back with me. I thought I could just like leave it there and start on the straight and narrow, you know, and um, it just didn't work out that way. And <clears throat> fast forward to 2010, a friend of mine invited me to a Bible study. I started getting plugged into this Bible study and uh, started leading worship, start, start, start pursuing, actively pursuing the Lord. And uh, let's see, 2015, 
uh, I quit my job to do music full time and start getting into this routine. It was a routine, man, where I was just checking the boxes and, and hustle. I mean, just grinding as an indie artist. I was, I look back now and I just realize how much that I was just blowing and going, checking the boxes, going through the routine. And um, I knew that God had called me to do music, but like, I was just going through the motions and checking the boxes. And 2020 hits. We all know what happened in 2020. What? Like, <laughs> we we got, we're just going to call it the C word, bro. That's all we're going to call it right now. <laughs> yeah. The cancellations and, oh my gosh. I, I was about to go on the biggest tour of my life. I was going to go to like six different countries. I was super excited for this tour that I worked really hard on. You know, I do all my own booking. But in case you didn't realize how many times I just said the word I in the last like 15 seconds. It was yeah. all about Justin. And I was all trying to just make a name for myself and trying to slap, you know, the Holy Spirit's letter of approval on it and say that I was doing the Lord's work. And I mean, I, I really believe that the Lord was using my music then and using, um, you know, the, the tour scheduling and, you know, meeting people, the divine appointments and all that. But really, I got into this, I kind of fell into this pit of complacency where I was just going through the motions and the Lord used that season of the pandemic to like get my attention mm -hmm. and, and show me just how much I didn't know how to be still in the midst of chaos. Yeah, I did not yeah. know how to, how to trust my heavenly father. I didn't know how to, to just take time out of my day to spend time with him. Yeah. Like I was just, I was just, it just wasn't part of the to-do list, you know? Right. And it was October 8th. I mean, we're, we just passed up the three year anniversary, October 8th, 2020. I led worship at this church in Salt Lake City. I'm finally back on the road. I'm sitting in my van and the Lord says, Justin, I want you to go home and I want you to do a night of worship, a night of revival in your hometown. And I was like thinking, Lord, I'm all I'm all for this. Let's do it. I'm game. Mm. Let's go. And I said, what's the venue, Lord? He said, the courthouse. I said, forget it. No. <laughs> I was like, Lord, you know, I got bad memories at the courthouse. Like, what? why are you going to ask me to do it at the courthouse, man? And I just had like this, you know, this, this inward argument with the Lord until I finally was like, all right, Lord, I'm going to do this. And um, I had to go back to the same courthouse mm. and get permission from, Oh my gosh, bro. I was like, maybe, maybe there's different people in office now. And, oh man, everybody, <laughs> everybody just seemed to remember my name and yeah. my face. Was that judge still there? He was not still there at the time. Uh, so hmm. there was a, um, he's a, he's a lawyer now. And, uh, his office is like right around the corner from the courthouse. But his brother was the sitting county judge at the time. Mm. And, or, or now and um and i come to find out that both of these guys listen to my music now yeah like, wow. and, and they and they're like they're like oh yeah we're big fans yeah you can do this and yeah we remember you like we remember yeah. little justin gambino 18 years old 16 years ago and i was like this is crazy and so i'm on stage at that courthouse on December 12th, 2020, I can honestly sit here and tell you that like from that point forward, that's whenever the love of Christ was real to me. Even though I was raised in church my whole life, like yeah. that's whenever, that's whenever I felt like I was that prodigal son in Luke 15 that, that came to his senses mm. and turned to start walking back towards the father's house. And that's when the Lord just like ran to me and embraced me. And, and, and one thing that he, he, he spoke in my spirit that night was Justin. I know you remember coming up here 16 years ago and I yeah. know that it was hard to come back to this place, but I wanted to show you that the same plan that I had for you then is the same plan I have for you now. Mm -hmm. you, you, you made some decisions 
that brought you through some valleys and you've had some, you'd had some, uh, you know, mountaintop experiences, but some really deep valleys, but I never left you. I was, I was, I was tugging on your heart and calling you, you know, in the desert when I put the guitar back in your hand, I was, I was, I just, I just, now the only that, you know, he, he told me, he said, it's the same plan then is the same plan now. The only difference is, is now I have your full attention. Yeah. Now I have your yeah. full attention and I want to, I want to tell you what I want you to do next. And that's when I started writing this next record or this, this record that's released now started, yeah. started writing the record that, um, it just released about a month and a half ago and it's geared towards the prodigal sons and daughters, man. Um, my heart is just that, that these songs would, would call the prodigals home. And, yeah. you know, if someone's listening to it and, and they, um, they're not a prodigal, but but they have a prodigal in their family. I mean, we all come on. We all yeah. got either prodigals in our in our oh, yeah. circle of friendships, our relationships, or our family. And man, that's my heart, man. It's just I just want to reach the prodigals. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, no, that's so good. Now I feel like I mean, even I know I can, and um. I'm not going to speak for Jesse, but I know he can too. Just the, your testimony relate to it. And we were raised in church, then had a, a, a fallout, um, away from, you know, everything. And then, you know, there was a moment that was like, God was like, Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Let, let, let's, let's come back. Like it's, it's your time. Yeah. Um, and now, and now we all are in ministry you know, volunteering in ministry or on staff in ministry. And it's just crazy to see the, the turnaround that's happened. And, yeah. And it's one of the uh, reasons Justin, I like uh, your testimony stood out to me is because like Chris was saying, for me, it's this, like, you know, you grew up, uh, you went in the Navy, Lord got a hold of you, brought you back to where you came from. I mean, I, so I kind of did the same thing. I, I joined the Navy, not because I had to, but because I was just trying to get away from what I didn't like at home. Wow. Ran from the Lord and the Lord. It's funny because the last place I wanted to come back was my home, Louisville. Like I did not want to come back. I was like, that's what I got away from. Well, I, when I got out of the Navy, I had to go back home. And that's where the Lord got a hold of me. So I like when you were talking about, you know, going to the courthouse and and God was like, yeah, I brought you back to where you came from because my, you know, my plan's not changed. I mean, that, that, that's like, that's when I heard your testimony for the first time. I was like, I was like, that's, I can relate to that. Cause I had, to, God brought me back home and was like, I, I'm not done with you. <laughs> like, am I, you're, I just have your attention now, just like you said. So, yeah. so with your, with your new album, um, you were talking about the songs on there and how, what your, your heart behind them and what your hope is for people who listen to them. I mean, I'd love to know a little bit more about the song fighting on my behalf. Yeah, just kind man. of the process of writing that and what it means to you. So I actually wrote that. That's one of, uh, that's one song that, you know, uh, post pandemic and all the revival stuff, of course it was recorded after that, but it was a song that I wrote right before, um, the pandemic hit. And I was actually in Colorado and <clears throat> just started facing some opposition, some cancellations, the loss of income, um, you know, some unexpected time off from the road. And it's like, man, Lord, I know that I, I know that you're going to provide for me. Yeah. I just, I, I, I'm having a hard time trusting that right now. And yeah. uh, I wrote, I wrote that song in the basement of someone's home that was hosting me in Colorado. And I was like, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to write this song and I'm going to keep on singing that. I'll trust you even in the valley in loss and darkness. I, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to sing about trusting you until I trust you mm, because yeah. whenever I was writing it, like I felt like, man, I'm saying it, but I don't feel it yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know? And, um, you know, I just felt like in that season, I was like, man, I feel like I can't even like take a step forward. Like, or it seems like every step forward I take, it's like another two back steps, you know? Um, so that's where I was whenever I wrote that. And, um, uh, started, I think that was the song 
that connected me with the producer that produced this record. Okay. Yeah, that was a song that he first heard. And um, and so, yeah, man, we just hit the ground running with uh, songs like Courage and Fighting on My Behalf and and really just, uh, you know, that, that, those that, those were kind of like the foundation, the groundwork of the whole record. Um, and the crazy thing is, it's like, like starting to write the record and stuff, we actually had a totally different set list of songs. Like the track list was totally different up until mm. June of last year. Mm. Um, a church out in Carson City, Nevada, asked me to come out and lead worship. And right before I got there, they the pastor couldn't. He he had to he had to leave on a family uh, family emergency, and he was like, "Hey man, I need you to cover for me." And I thought he meant <laughs> like. I need you to tell everyone from the stage like that I'm not there. I can't be there right. today and and uh maybe do like a whole <laughs> a whole Sunday of worship or something. And uh, uh and I was like, Yeah, I can do that and he was like, So you can preach, yeah? I was like, do what? <laughs> you want me to you want me to what? You want me to put the guitar like, down? I'm the guitar guy. I'm the guitar uh, guy. Yeah. <laughs> you get the guitar out of my hand, I don't know what to do. And, uh, I'm, gonna, he, I'm gonna preach while playing the guitar. <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna pick I'm just gonna pick yeah. softly yeah, while pick I, around. you know. Oh no, it was it was so outside of my comfort zone, but I felt strongly that the Lord was like, I want you to preach about Luke fifteen, the prodigal son story, mm. and show your testimony. And bro, that was that was the day that the Lord was like, That's what this album needs to be geared towards. And because I, I stayed, I was just amazed at just how many people came up to me after the sermon and wanted me to pray with them for their prodigal sons and daughters. Yeah. I was there till like, I don't know, like 1 or 2 p.m. in the afternoon, just praying mm -hmm. with people, crying with people. And, um, and the Lord was just like, hey, this, is the, this album needs to, needs to be to, you know, geared towards the prodigal sons. And even though we had like a full track list of what, like what I was planning to put on the right. record, um, I came home from that trip and I wrote, um, I think like five songs off the record coming back from that trip. And so a lot of stuff off the record was like, man, just, I mean, within six months fresh. Um, yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, man, I guess you could say that trip is when the album was made new. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, man. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, man. Well, Justin, that's this is whenever... a... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that's whenever the vision for the record became crystal clear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and it just, like, lit a fire um, in my spirit to... Like, there was, like, there was a vision and a mission. And I saw the in, the, the finish line for it, and I was like, we're going in that direction, full speed. Um, mm. So, yeah, man. Oh. Well, Justin, this is a, a fan-based um, podcast, and we will let our listeners know who we are interviewing. And we had a fan reach out uh, and had a question about one of your songs. Uh, okay. His name is Brandon from St. Louis, and he wants to know the story behind your song, Going Under. Oh, man. Okay. Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? All right. <laughs> his name is Brandon. Uh-huh. Yep. All right, so that was off the Anchor EP. First song off the Anchor EP, released it right before the pandemic hit. And I want to say that I wrote that song somewhere around 2017, somewhere around there. And I was about to quit music. I was about to hang it up. And I just felt like I was spinning my wheels. I felt like I wasn't getting any traction. And it, the lyrics came to me whenever I was actually on a run. I was running maybe, I was probably like another three quarters of a mile back to my house. I was off off from the road at that time. And uh, I couldn't run back to my house fast enough to jot down yeah. these lyrics. And uh, and started, and then I hit the road. Um, hit the road and just kind of finished it while I was on the road and started performing it for people. And just started realizing just how much people were like, man, they the song was just resonating in them. And, you know, and they were just like, man, I, I can, I, I feel that right here. 
every time you play that song and I knew that I needed to record it. And so, yeah, um, released that. And the funny thing is I released that on that anchored EP right before the pandemic. And my whole goal, my, like what I wanted to do was hit the road and ask people, Hey, what, what, what anchors you? Yeah. Where do you find your rest? And that was my goal, man. And then the pandemic hit and I found out just how much I was not anchored and just how yeah. much I couldn't find time to rest. And I started to keyword started to learn how to rest and to yeah. be still. Um, keyword started. Started. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm not, I haven't figured it all out yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like... Um just from the few songs you've mentioned um your writing process is kind of not all over the place but it's just random things that inspire you and it's just like a oh, lyric yeah. will hit and you're just like oh got to write that down and then you kind of like sit in and and then hammer out the rest of the song yeah and i can't tell you how many voice memos i have in my phone oh yeah yeah <laughs> drive drive driving I, it happened to me today like get out my phone i'm like driving uh, I think I was actually driving um, on I-70 today through, like, uh, Illinois and Indiana and just had a song idea. So I'm, like, you know, yeah. saying the <laughs> the words into my phone and singing whatever melody is, you know. Yeah. You probably hear road noise more than my voice. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how it, how it happens, man. Um, yeah, it's, it, yeah, sometimes here's here's kind of a cool story behind a song on the record there is no love like the love of jesus um was actually a journal entry and i did not want to put that song on the record it was just so mm. personal for me yeah. yeah and um the first the first uh verse of that song was just something that i wrote in my journal it was just like mm. a letter to god and uh and then i just had one line that said there's no love like the love of jesus and uh it was just so vulnerable and personal for me to to chase that song in the studio because that's all i had and my producer he was like this is the song we need to chase and we need to record it today yeah and it was like eight maybe ten hours in the studio where we wrote the rest of the song we wrote the rest of the lyrics we wrote the melody and we had like a vocal and acoustic track um you know ready to go not acoustic but we had the piano down for it and it was like and I did not want to put that on the record, but I'm so glad that I did because people are, you know, they're starting to ask about that one too. You know, where'd that come from? That came right yeah. out of Justin's journal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you're, you you got to be glad it was that entry because some of the other entries wouldn't make great songs. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. Ty place in Florence, Kentucky. Yeah. <laughs> Grocery <laughs> lifestyle. The, the time I needed a Bucky's. I use that one bathroom after the worker. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm the only guy that's the worker. The time oh, I man. should have asked for spice level three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's Justin, great. is it thundering where you are? Or is that just your stomach? No. <laughs> I was actually, I was actually like, wait, what? Is it thundering? <laughs> oh man. Uh, oh, Justin, bro. something we like to do with first time guests to help our listeners. It, it's a fun thing and our listeners enjoy it. I uh, get to know a little bit more about you. Uh, we do a favorite thing segment. So we're going to list a category. You let us know what your favorite thing in that category is. And we'll start with an easy one. What is your favorite food? Oh, man. Um, all right. Right now, you know, it's like seasons for me. So, like, right now, my favorite food is like. I'm I'm a sucker for Thai food right now. Um, He's saying this from a Thai restaurant. <clears throat> yeah, I'm saying this from a true Thai the, connoisseur, bro. That's the sign, bro. Right yeah. there, it is. <laughs> I had I was in uh, Kansas City last night, and uh, I had Thai last night too. I'm just like on this Thai kick. Oh yeah, and uh, I think I've had Thai three times this week. Yeah. But, Got like a stomach of iron. Your wife's bro. gonna love that when I'm, you see her. I'm I'm sure your your stomach is tired of that. <laughs> oh lord, uh, that was too oh, hard, yeah. Chris. Too much, <laughs> too much of a stretch, Chris. Love these, dad, these dad jokes. <laughs> oh. 
Justin, uh, do you have a favorite movie? Oh man. Um, I like some good action. Um, and, uh, I would say that I really like, man, that's good. I've never heard of that one. No, I haven't answered yet. (laughs) (laughs) Um, man. Okay. I love me some action, but I would say that uh, hook. Hook would oh, probably yes. be like I'm gonna go classic. old school. That's great. Man. That is. I could I could I could watch that movie whenever, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, See, I thought you were gonna say I, I love some action. The Notebook. Yes. So I'm glad it didn't go that way. Oh my gosh, bro! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, how, do, how do you feel well, about uh, action, Chris? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you feel about the Sandlot? Oh, love the Sandlot. You know, whenever so, like, I actually played baseball as a kid, and uh, everybody called me the Great Bambino. That's okay. what I was hoping. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Did they call you the Great Gambino? Oh, yeah. That's that's just too. It's a softball pitch. You got to hit that out of the park, right? It's got to. Yeah, happen. yeah, man. They call <laughs> they call me the Great Bambino all the time. It's like. I thought you said the great Bambi. Yeah. <laughs> that wimpy deer. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, that's a, Justin, that's a classic. just saying, like, for an intro to your shows, you could play that clip from the movie and do a voiceover and just say the Gambino. Great Gambino. Instead of Bambino. You know. Band name, man. It's a I'm good the band great name. Gambino. You know, and then you come out. <laughs> and then I just go like this. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and then on the other hand, have Thai food. There it is. There yeah. it is. <laughs> All right, moving moving yeah. right along. <laughs> what is your favorite show to binge? Um, man. Okay, so I'll just answer what the last show that I did binge was The Chosen. Oh um, yeah, and I'm like anxiously yeah. waiting for season four. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of what else before. Uh, my wife did turn me on to Madam Secretary, okay, and we we it. oh yeah, yeah yeah we we binged that one. I want to say it was like you know pandemic time, like where mm. I was home all the time, and we just like yeah we binged Madam Secretary, and uh, I was like, man, what am I doing? I don't know <laughs> what I'm doing. I uh, I'm not... <laughs> the chosen. I read. Um, there was a, like a an article out that they leaked that wasn't supposed to leak and they like ruin the ending for everybody. It's like, no, Jesus dies it's another sins, and then he Jacob comes from man. Him. He comes uh. back to life. I mean, it's crazy, man. All right. So whenever, whenever passion of the Christ came out, uh, a good friend of mine, he is a jokester to the bone and we're like in the movie theater. It's whenever it came out and we did like a youth lock in, and we all went to like go to see the movie the next day. And uh, these kids behind us kept on like talking. They weren't in our youth group. They kept on talking and just like cutting up and being loud. My friend just turns around. And he's like, if y'all don't be quiet, I'm going to spoil the ending. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he said. And I was like, <laughs> uh, it's like yeah. Titanic. I mean, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh my God. You know, you know. Okay, speaking of Titanic, you know how long it was before, like, I actually watched the entire movie. And same. Whenever, whenever I finally watched it front to back, I was like, "This isn't Titanic. This is starting with some old lady." Yeah. Like, this is some like, is this the sequel? And I missed yeah, it. Went on. And I was like, it's, oh. it's also like the same as the Notebook. It starts out with an old lady and an old man. <laughs> and it, oh yeah, it does, bro. How yeah. many times have you seen the Notebook? Chris? I know he's been I know, right? it multiple times already. I know. <laughs> That's classic. <laughs> Justin, do you have a favorite musician of all time? Ooh, um, oh, of all time. It could be. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All time. Man, I mean, I grew up on Switchfoot, so I would say John Foreman. Well, this might, uh, we might know this answer. What is, do you have a dream duet? John Foreman. 
Yeah. <laughs> be John Foreman, bro. Um, no. I, 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 uh, I've actually been like sending some emails. I'm like, Hey, I want to feature you on, uh, becoming me on my record. It's mm-hmm. like, I don't know if you can, if you've listened to becoming me, but it's kind of got like this fading West kind of mm-hmm. vibe, switch foot vibe. Like, how cool would it be to have John oh, yeah. featured on that song? That'd be cool. John, yeah, you know, you're that- listening. Best con- yeah. Yeah, come on, John. The best concert I've ever seen uh, with Switchfoot or uh, or with John was when I lived in San Antonio. For some reason, I don't remember why, but Switchfoot. I guess they had a new album out, and they were uh, they were going from Best Buy to Best Buy around the country, and they were doing like these small acoustic shows in Best Buys. And I found out that they were going to be at the Best Buy down the road from me, and I drove down there, and it was just it was just like him and maybe one other guy in the band i can't remember exactly but it was the best show i've yeah. ever seen and then like That's they so cool. they hung out with everybody and then out in the parking lot he did his whole little parking lot show yeah, i mean that bro. was like the best most awesome like musical experience well, and I've, yeah. seen, like, I, I've seen them like play big stadiums and all that stuff but that was the best they were yeah. so good well didn't you see jesse didn't you see him like a year or so ago and with need to breathe yeah yeah that was a good show like two hours a piece yeah, that was a really good show, but still, that Best Buy parking lot in San Antonio was by far the best John Foreman concert I've ever been nice. to. Nice, heck yeah, dude! That's that's so awesome. I've got a few ex- similar experiences with those guys, and uh, so yeah, I, I not only look up to them as musicians, but I look to the, up to them. You know, just they're just great human beings, bro. They're like genuine yeah. people. So um, whenever I answer my that question, I'm thinking of like all the things as far as why oh, yeah. I love that person. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. So this next one uh, can be very divisive um, depending on your answer. Um, so <laughs> what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Bro, I'm a simple man and I love <laughs> me some vanilla ice cream. See, we can respect <laughs> that. Right. We can respect that. It's respectful. Because you can always I mean, add I to was, it. You can always add to it. You know, <laughs> um, once you put everything in there, you can't take it out. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's the best one to do root beer floats. I'm a sucker for root beer, mm. you know, and uh, so or to half a bottle yeah, of man. chocolate syrup in it. Yeah, <laughs> what, you can do whatever you want. And yeah. uh, I was actually in Washington State a couple weeks ago. Amazing little ice cream shop in de- this little town. And they have like all these flavors that they make in house. I'm like, yeah. can I get your vanilla? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, I mean, but really, you can always tell a good ice cream place by just their simple flavor, like either vanilla oh, yeah. chocolate. Like if they have a great vanilla chocolate, like the, those staples, then you know they're they've got good ice cream. Like yeah, because there's sure. nothing to hide behind. Like you don't have brownie bits to hide behind. Or, <laughs> exactly. Like, exactly. And I tell you what, man, that was some really good vanilla ice cream. So next time I go, I'll try something different. But I always start off with vanilla. <laughs> God, I just want to be your vanilla ice cream. Make me anything you want. This is the journal <laughs> entry of Justin Gambino that did not make the album. Is uh, my Justin, phone, do you have a is my phone <laughs> taken? Because I'm laughing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Justin, do you have a favorite podcast? Um, I would say I just learned about this one. Um, it's called the Christian Music Guys podcast. Have you guys heard of it? That's fantastic. I man. think we have. So good. Yes. So I like good. how you, you even placed it. If you even I, placed if I, it right. That was. Yeah. If I, um, I, I did start dabbling into uh, the basement recently. Oh um, yeah. Um, his name just left me. Um. Tim what's Ross. that about him? Okay. The basement. Um. T- yeah, Tim, I think Tim Ross. Tim Ross? Yeah, it's Tim Ross. Yeah, Tim Tim Ross, The Basement. Jacob, you asked what it was about? Mm-hmm. You're just going to have to go and listen to the very first episode, bro. Because I, li- <laughs> I listened to the very first episode where he talked about how God gave him the vision for the podcast, The Basement, and I cried. Mm-hmm. I was like, because it was so similar to like kind of how I started uh, um, my music journey and like how someone just came in and backed me financially. Mm. And so it just, it just made me think of like, you know, where I started 
and uh, that's that's what happened to him. Like he he left his uh, pastoral position, and uh, yeah, I mean the basement. We needed like another half hour to talk about like why it's called the basement, Jacob. But um, it's 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 a solid podcast. Um, yeah, I I haven't listened to it in a minute, but um, just because whenever I'm on the road, believe it or not, I don't listen to anything while I'm on the road. Um, yeah. It is it is my devotion time. Nice. It is. So it's, you know, I'll call my wife, you know, you know um, talk to her, maybe talk to my dad. But other than that, it's just me and me and the Lord, man, on the road. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Tim Ross has had a lot of conversations, like interviews with this guy named Ruslan. I don't know if you've seen those, uh, uh, but he has a YouTube uh-huh. channel called Ruslan. And he's on there a lot, man. They've had some amazing conversations on there too. Okay. Really good. Okay, I'm gonna check them out. Do you have a favorite uh, Bible verse? I would say right now, it changes. I would say right now, um, it would be Exodus fourteen fourteen that says, "I will fight for you. I need you only to be still." And I think right now in this season that that's my favorite Bible verse. Did yeah. you think I was going to say John three sixteen? No. <laughs> All right. Actually, no, John eleven. Said... I thought it was going to be John eleven thirty five. <laughs> Jesus wept. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that, that's the shortest one, but no. I don't Not think hardly favorite. hardly any of uh, the people that we interview ever say John three sixteen. That was it's just different that's verses good. normally. Yeah, you know. that's cool. Justin, what's next for you, and how can our listeners keep up with you? Um, man, um, what's next for me? Let's get really personal. Um, whenever I get off this tour, I'm going to, I'm going to paint my house. Yeah. Nice. And then, like uh, a... I'm actually, I'm actually hitting the studio in about a week, um, recording the next single. Um, and so, Christmas yeah, song? 2020, no, no, <laughs> no. I'm going to release a, a new single um, and it'll probably be like February, March, I'm thinking. Yeah. I, I need, Chris, I need if, little... it was, if it was Go Christmas, ahead. it would have already, it would have already had to have been in the studio. That would have been like July in the studio. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't gotten on, you know, I'm an independent artist, so I can kind of decide what I, what I don't release, you know, um, yeah. which is, which is uh, a perk. Um, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't know. I, I haven't been able to, like, get behind the whole, oh, let's release Christmas music. Like, what? yeah, I listen to it enough when my wife just wants to play it all the time in the car, bro. When I'm home, off to it. <laughs> like, can we? It's not even Thanksgiving yet. Can we wait till December 1st? <laughs> You're not one of those. Today. I'm one of those, bro. I'm uh, one of those. Forgive see, me. We, we are Forgive all not. Me. All of us, we are like Christmas We're music put in, your tree uh, up in October, October, people. September first. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> You're lying, bro. Hob- You're lying. Hobby Lobby has it up in July. Why not? <laughs> I know. I was home like a week ago. Took a couple days off, and I walk into Lowe's, and I'm like, "Really, guys? Oh, you guys got Christmas stuff out? Yeah, Come Halloween on. stuff's on clearance." <laughs> Yeah, man. You got That's the Halloween crazy. stuff right next to the Christmas stuff, too. <laughs> I know. I know. Push back the darkness. Uh, and then l- the best way to keep up with you would be like your social media channels. Yeah, social media. Um, and then justingambino.com uh, just directs you to everything as far as like email newsletters. I still do the email thing. Uh, yeah. And then it leads you to all my, all my socials, you know. What is, what's all out there right awesome. now? I'm not on know. Pinterest. Yeah. But, you know, I'm on all You might that. need to now that you're going to paint your house, you know. You know, I kind of leave that up to my wife. She's on yeah. Pinterest. <laughs> uh, well, Justin, to wrap up, we'd just like to ask if you'd be willing to share something that God has been doing, maybe even recently in your life, that you'd be willing to share that would help build our listeners' faith. Um. Yeah, um, one thing that the Lord has been really convicting me of is like how much I have, what I'm holding in my hand right now, how much I have my phone in my hand whenever I'm around people that I love. 
And so, and I've noticed the more I have it in my hand, the more distracted I am and the more distracted mm-hmm. I am, the more reactive I'm going to be if I get frustrated. And the Lord has been teaching me to respond slowly rather than react quickly, um, which has been just a whole, it's just something that I'm learning right now. Yeah. And um, I did a podcast interview last week and, um, and I encourage those listeners to be like, hey, you know, take some time without any kind of distractions whenever you're around people that you love. Like, how can you be more intentional with the relationships around you? And the only way you can be intentional with the relationships around you is if you're first intentional with the Heavenly Father. So if we can get intentional there and invest in that relationship, spend time with him, make it a point to do it, all the other relationships will just will, will be a, a, a Christian who responds with love rather than reacting out of the flesh. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. That's good. Appreciate that. I think most people hearing that can grow in that area of their lives. <laughs> so, yeah. Myself good word. included, good word, bro. bro. Myself yeah. included. So. It's so, so easy to get distracted, especially nowadays in this day and age. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Justin, the great Gambino... Uh, it has been an honor. <laughs> Appreciate you. Thanks for taking think, time. Yeah, for, for those of y'all who are just listening, he just pointed to the sky like the Sandlot. So it was oh, yeah. a, a perfect yeah. reenactment, a reenactment of <laughs> Thank you, the <bro>. great. <laughs> Not the great Did you, Hold on. 